Good afternoon, everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. By now, it's obvious to you, if you've been watching the videos, that it's time to pull this engine. I think I said that in the tail end of the last video. But uh, when it comes to setting an engine on an engine stand, you've got all kinds of options available. You can you can get the cheap ones from Harbor Freight or Princess Auto, uh, any of those cheap ones like that, a Cummins, which actually has a very, very inexpensive uh, engine stand. And most of those are rated at 1,000, 1,000 pounds, maybe 1,250 pounds. Uh, something like that and so what I like to use is I like to use one of the old homemade ones uh, just all made out of just scrap material off the job site this one here for example is, is what I consider exceptionally heavy I have no idea what it would be rated at but I've had a couple of pretty heavy motors including a Ford 460 on it and also a 201 uh, three-cylinder Ford diesel uh, engine out of a backhoe on it uh, those are probably two of the heaviest engines and had absolutely no issue at all I don't know what they weigh maybe not even a thousand pounds or whatever but I still would rather trust this than one of the uh, one of the cheap ones just got some reasonably heavy-duty casters you know just off of something I found in a trash trash dumpster and then two inch box tubing I think it's schedule 40 box tubing uh, you know cut uh, the appropriate lengths and everything you know and then of course 3 8 plate steel uh, this is a piece of uh, blower shaft right here uh, it's a one inch blower shaft to use that for the handle for rotating and here's another piece of the rope uh, of a blower shaft that I use for a T-handle set screw and I got an inch and a half blower shaft all the way through this schedule 80 black iron pipe fitting here on the top that acts as the the collar for allowing it to rotate and then this is 3 8 steel plate then all I've done was just drilled a series of holes and knowing that you're going to be able to arbitrarily move these to fit just about any any small engine we have in these tractors and this is nothing more than one inch strap that I just bent around a rod in order so to so that you can slip it in or adjust for radius whatever of the mounting bolts on the engine whatever you need to do on all of these in order to uh, secure the four bolts to the uh, back of the engine housing on this inch and a half shaft here I drilled dimples at nine o'clock six o'clock three o'clock and nine o'clock to allow locking into position like if I roll it to this point here I can work on the side of the engine lock it in place I can roll the engine upside down, lock it in place, working on the uh, uh, crankshaft, everything, putting in the crank bearings, rod bearings, all that kind of stuff, or rotate it back around to the top. Each position you stop it in, you just run the T-handle in, and it'll run a set screw, a big bolt that I ground into a set screw into the dimple and hold it in that position. Now when it comes to, uh, to actually disconnecting the engine from the torque tube, you want to have either an engine, engine leveler which will have a crank on the end and it'll be able to, by rotating the crank, shift the weight or the balance of the engine one way or the other for the lifting eye that lifts off of the center of that, uh, that apparatus. Or you can just use a simple, simple chain setup like this right here, which has a T-slot you know, for the chain links. So you can just adjust it from here or a different link back there to level out the weight of the engine like that. And if you use these guys right here or any kind of them, whenever you put that plate onto your studs, don't hook it up here to the top of your stud bolts, any of the stud bolts, because you're going to be lifting essentially from two studs. When you lift up from here, the weight of that motor is going to be pulling in, and it's going to want to have a tendency to bend your studs inward. You don't want that, because then you're going to find yourself, you know, und replacing these studs. So what I like to do is I like to take and cut like a gas pipe and extend the gas pipe all the way down over top of that stud and put some retaining washers and a retaining nut on top so that all the weight is transferred all the way down here at the very base of the uh, the stud right above the top of the block and it has a less of a tendency to uh, to cause that to bend outward. Now I ain't saying you ain't going to bend them anyway but uh, this minimizes the, the chances of that happening. This particular engine here is only held to the torque tube by four bolts so get your wrenches on there ready and get ready to give her some give her some give it a bit of a tug in order to get those cracked loose. That's not too bad. I can need a second for backup in there. That's starting to spin. I'll undo the other one on this side on the bottom because the weight is going to have a tendency to pull it downward when I undo this. And then I want to get the chain fall hooked up to take the pressure off of it so we don't put any pressure on the spline shaft uh, coming right off the crankshaft and into the input shaft of the uh, transmission. Hey, once you get the nuts or four bolts loose and removed, um, you kind of got to be gentle, but you got to get a little rough with it at the same time. 
uh, because those things sometimes are sucked in there really pretty good. So you can see I've got this one broke loose right now because it took just a little bit of finagling to get it loose. But at any rate, once you get it to that point, you should be able to very gently walk it out. Another thing to remember, when you've got this leveling bar here, or leveling chain, keep an eye on the crack here and here because you want to remove that perfectly straight. You don't want to remove it at an angle downward because you can bend some of your mounting bolts or whatever. So you want to be very, very careful. And the flywheel and everything, the spline, should slip right off of the spline from the input shaft. So we get this out a little bit farther. Looks like I'm going to be a little heavy on the back end back there. So what we'll do is we'll spin it out and get it on the ground as quickly as we can. The main thing, just have to take your time, be patient, be a little careful with it, because you can do some damage to, to different things. Like this pump should have actually been removed, but because there's so much rust and stuff inside, I want to get this on my engine stand and um, and be very careful about all the disassembly. So I didn't, this really should be removed before you do that, as well as the power steering reservoir and pump over here. You see a lot of moisture evident, you know, back in here. So it's going to get interesting here in a little bit. But uh, now what we'll do is back up, regroup. I'm one link off of being level, so I'll, I'll rest this all the way down, move it over one link, hopefully pick it up close to level, and then we'll go ahead and pull the flywheel and uh, the clutch, the clutch pressure plate assembly off the back end of it. We're going to go ahead and mount the uh, engine to the engine stand off of the back end. Well, guys, we got the engine up off the floor, and we went ahead and bolted it to the engine stand. There's always a little problem, uh, invariably. Uh, this one here was no exception. This guy here, instead of having four bolts on the back end that actually bolt through the housing, this guy here actually had two studs. So I had to stop and make it a, had to make a, a plate uh, to adapt from those studs to where I could mount this out here on the outside edges so that we could uh, securely get it onto the, the, the engine stand. We are ready to turn it upside down and drop the pan off and take a look and see what's in there. I uh, went ahead and pulled the drain plug and pulled out all the nasty oil and uh, I know that there was a little bit of water in there because I could actually feel it, but the fuel that I dumped in number two, three, and four, about an inch and a half or two inches deep, that's all disappeared, so it's gone down around the rings and ended up down in the uh, in the pan, but number one didn't budge a bit. I don't think I one iota. I do not believe the level dropped one bit. Next step, we're going to rotate this thing upside down and take the pan off. Got my set screw loosened up here. Sometimes whenever you're um, working on it, if you don't have set screws in that shaft, and this is an inch and a half solid steel shaft, but if you don't set that set screw into those indentions you drilled into it, you could be uh, working on it you know, at a 45 degree angle or whatever, and all of a sudden it'll, it'll flip on you. So you always got to make sure you lock those. So we're going to go ahead and grab the impact we're going to drop these guys off of here. Diesel. The diesel is down there too. But the diesel fuel will mix with the oil. The water just bubbles up. And that's why I got all this on the floor. You're talking about the oil that he took out. Yeah. We get, yeah. We're, we're getting ready for the big reveal. <laughs> we're going to see what it's going to show us, ain't we? we I are. just hope the whole bottom of the crankshaft and all that is not rusty. There is slight possibility, but it, it felt like about a cup and a half of water came out. That's what it felt like. Because you can feel water on your hands is all. But there shouldn't have been any water in there. Should not have been any water in there. Sadness. Let me get these out of the way. Very exciting. And the camera might not be tall enough. Mallet in hand. Okay. All right. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. No rust. No rust. No rust. Oh, yay. Let me see the inside. 
Ew. Okay. Yeah. Is that what it's supposed to look like? Yeah, kind of. It's, uh, it's kind of messy. messy. Sludge. It's sludgy. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna move the camera close. It's closer. Did the right. red light right. come on? Yes, red light's on. Okay. Hopefully you'll be. Ah, oh, light is wonderful. Okay. Swoop down here and take a look. This is the bottom of number four. The piston itself looks really, really good. The liner looks really good, but there's a tremendous amount of rust on the actual uh, crankshaft right here. Okay, but I that's, think it's, a, that's a crankshaft? Uh, well, yeah, uh-huh. Really? Yeah. The crankshaft goes through the center here, and then these here are the offset parts right here that counter the, the force of the piston and all that stuff. See, there's your connecting rods here and the rod bearings. Okay. These are the main bearings here. This has five sets of main bearings, wow. Is that a good thing? Yeah, that's really good because that keeps uh, the crankshaft from flexing. But there is some rust like right over. Yeah, along. this is all what I was telling you about. Okay. This is covered in rust here, but, but that's it's okay. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. The bearings got a little rust right there. But you're going to have to clean all that out? Oh, this out? all got to be like disassembled. Like pad or something? Oh, yeah, even better than that. Okay. But three, two, two, three, and four look pretty good, but come up here and look at number one. Yeah, I saw that. The entire connecting rod is completely rust filled all the way down. I can see rust coming out of the bottom of the piston. Of course, it's an aluminum piston, but it's rust coming down the uh, sleeve on the outside of the piston. So the next thing happens, oil pump's got to come out. This is the oil pump right here. That's the oil pump. Well, That's this is the oil pickup tube, and then the oil pump's over here. Okay, but there's no rust in there. No, no rust in there. Yay. But we take all these bolts off right here. That'll be the main bolts, Okay. main bearing bolts, and those are ones that have to be labeled and put back in orientation. Number one will have to go in number one, right side goes to the right, two, three, four, all the way down. Once we get those off, then we can, if we can, try to get the uh, rod caps off of whichever ones we can get them off of. Yeah. And then we start going about the business of um, oh, getting the crankshaft out. But the rod caps all have to come off in order for the crankshaft to come out. Then we can beat on the pistons from the top side. Okay, and you know where all these little pieces, when you take them off, you're going to know where they go back to? Well... We'll, we'll, we'll guess and see if we can figure it out. No, the, no, the, really, really. I mean, this, is there like a diagram or you just have to remember? Well, you have to remember. You have to remember. You have to mark them and make sure that you put the pieces in the orientation that they come off. Just like we did on the push rods. Remember the push rods? Oh, yeah, but I couldn't put them there again. Well, there's nothing to those. Uh -huh, yeah, right. Okay, so what else you want to see? Oh, I want to see it back together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> So is that interesting or what? Okay, I just wanted to see if you could, if I could get a better view of the rust that goes all the way down to the crank thingy. Uh, well, this is a crankshaft. It goes oh. all the way up to the... So what is the thing down there attached to that well, at that's, the bottom? That's the bottom of the piston. Okay. Those so. are the piston skirts that you're seeing and the wrist pin in the dead center. Right. So there's rust all the way down there. So this is a view of a tractor's inside parts that I hope... You guys never have to see that are rusty because it's not nice. Hey, you know what this is right here? Uh, we can check the oil. That's a dipstick. That's a dipstick. Oh, well, that's cute. It's showing it doesn't have any oil in it right now. Okay. But yeah, there's there's rust on the top of those two there too. Like I said, at least the water, there was no water that got into the oil pump because the moisture rich environment. I guess it just condensed on those uh, surfaces and just ended up just rusting tremendously. Yeah, poor tractor. Well guys, we're beginning to see the extent of the damage due to the moisture to the water. So the missus just insisted on coming down and being able to take a look in the bottom of this because she just couldn't imagine what we would find inside here. So she was a little aghast at the rust. And you know, it is what it is, you know. It is kind of odd that so much moisture came down and rested on the bottom under the oil because the oil is definitely lighter than the than the uh, water, but yet there was still enough moisture in the atmosphere above the level of the oil all the way up to and out around the pistons to where it rusted those uh, connected rods so bad, you know. But then I don't think two, three, and four are stuck. None of the uh, rod bearings look bad. The three wrist pins do not look bad. Even number one wrist pin doesn't look bad. Time will tell. Next up, we're going to go ahead and pop these caps off of here and get ready to drive out the pistons. And that, that could be a, a little bit of fun with this guy up here. So you know what? This has been a fun afternoon. And this Tractor Man 44, the miss is already gone. So I'm out of here too. <laughs>